Hello everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. This session is in continuation with the chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases series. This is the part 2 of COPD where I will be discussing about chronic bronchitis. We have already seen in the earlier session about the differences between obstructive and restricted lung diseases. In this session, we will concentrate on the definition, pathogenesis, clinical features, morphology and a bit about diagnosis and treatment of chronic bronchitis. So, this is what we have seen earlier, right? Based on the pulmonary function test, the lung diseases are categorized broadly into obstructive and restrictive diseases. The examples for obstructive lung diseases as we saw earlier were emphysema, chronic bronchitis, bronchial asthma and bronchiectasis. So, in the last uh, session, we had uh, discussed in detail about emphysema, right? So, let's learn more about chronic bronchitis. So, chronic bronchitis is a clinical scenario where it is defined clinically as persistent cough with sputum production for at least three months in at least two consecutive years. Remember, this is all in the absence of any other identifiable cause. So, what is chronic bronchitis? Persistent cough with sputum production for at least three months in at least two consecutive years in the absence of any identifiable cause. So, let's look into the pathogenesis of chronic bronchitis. The primary or initiating factor for chronic bronchitis is exposure to noxious or irritating inhaled substances, particularly tobacco smoke. 90% of those affected are smokers. So, remaining 10% are basically from, you know, exposure dust from grain, cotton or silly. So, what happens whenever there is such exposure? So, exposure from tobacco smoke or from dust from grain, cotton and silica. So, these two results in enlargement of submucosal glands and the increase in the number of goblet cells. So, why does this happen? This is basically a protective reaction against the tobacco smoke or other pollutants by the release of various factors like histamine and interleukin-13. Initially, the larger areas are affected, but later, you know, marked increase in goblet cells is seen even in smaller airways, leading to mucus hypersecretion, which is the cause for airway obstruction, right? So, basically, it is the mucus hypersecretion which results in airway obstruction, and that mucus hypersecretion is because of increase in the goblet cells in the smaller airways. Now, smoking also results in inflammation, which can be both acute or chronic. In the long-standing cases, that can result in fibrosis of smaller airways, leading to airway obstruction. Smoking also results in acquired cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator dysfunction, CFTR dysfunction. So, what does this CFTR normally do? So, okay, this is a transmembrane regulator, as mentioned in the name itself. So, it regulates the movement of ions across the epithelial cells okay one of the most important function of cftr is it helps or it you know it regulates the secretion of mucus from these epithelial cells so it helps in the production of mucus in proper consistency and also in proper hydration so whenever there is a dysfunction of cftr the mucus which is produced is not hydrated well, okay. So, the production of mucus is basically a dehydrated one and that is what is important here, okay. So, CFTR dysfunction results in secretion of abnormal dehydrated mucus. Because the mucus is dehydrated, it does not result in proper mucociliary clearance. Okay, And thus, there is exacerbation of all the symptoms you find in chronic bronchitis. So, tobacco smoke can also result in infection. That's because, again, because of impaired mucociliary clearance, these patients are more prone for the development of infections, are more susceptible for development of infections and infections can further exacerbate all the features of chronic bronchitis. Right. So, this is in just about the pathogenesis of chronic bronchitis. What is more important to note here is that there is hypersecretion of mucus so, and that hypersecretion is because of enlargement of submucosal glands as well as increase in the number of goblet cells. So, what are the clinical features of chronic bronchitis? Most often, these patients have smoking history of 40 pack years or more. So, what do you mean by 40 pack years? That means this particular individual might have smoked 
one pack of cigarette per day for 40 long years. So that would be long duration of smoking history. Usually in CDC onset, very slowly progressive dyspnea and cough with expectoration. Symptoms often wax and wane over time, you know, and they are generally worse in the mornings. The cardinal symptom of chronic bronchitis is persistent cough. Okay, persistent cough, productive of sputum. You know why sputum? Because of mucus hyposecretion, right? And this persistent cough, productive of sputum, is coupled with hypercapnia, hypoxemia, and mild cyanosis that usually in the later stages. And finally, you know, it can also result in edema. And that edema is secondary to core pulmonale. Okay. Because of increased resistance in the airways results in pulmonary hypertension, which might lead, which will lead to right heart failure. This is called core pulmonale. Okay. And that will again result in edema. So this is how the name blue bloaters came into existence for patients of chronic bronchitis in end stages we should note that the chronic bronchitis is often accompanied by emphysema okay copd the symptoms depends upon which one predominates whether it is emphysematous component predominates or whether it is chronic bronchitis component predominates remember we know that smoking is the common risk factor for both these entities right so what is the morphology of chronic bronchitis grossly there is hyperemia swelling and edema of the mucous membranes and we saw there will be excessive mucinous or mucopurulent secretions. Purulent in case if it is infected, there will be mucopurulent secretions. And in some cases, you know, you can find heavy casts of secretions and that secretions and pus may fill the bronchi and bronchioles. This is the gross morphological feature of chronic bronchitis. Microscopically, all we uh, identify is chronic inflammation of the airways and thickening of bronchiolar wall or bronchial walls okay so what happens in thickening of bronchiolar wall it could be because of smooth muscle hypertrophy the thickening is because of deposition of extracellular matrix in the muscle layer could be because of peribronchial fibrosis could be because of goblet cell hyperplasia in the epithelium or could be because of enlargement of mucus secreting glands of all these features, it is the enlargement of mucus secreting glands which is the most predominant feature, right? And that's why we need to understand a term called read index. Now, what is this read index? Read index is basically it's a ratio between the thickness of submucosal glands to the thickness of epithelium from the basement to that of perichondrium of the underlying cartilage. So, A by B is always less than 0.4 so remember the thickness of the wall from the basement membrane of the epithelium to the cartilage is always double than that of than the thickness of the submucosal gland right that's a normal bronchus so what happens in chronic bronchitis is you will see increased number of submucosal glands there can be hyperplasia of submucous glands or there can be hypertrophy of submucous glands. You can also find lots of chronic inflammatory cells. They can be lymphocytes, plasma cells as well as macrophages. Okay, Here you can easily make out that there is very uh, much increased thickness of submucosal glands. Right, So, the ratio is always almost always more than 0 0.5 anything more than 0 0.5 significant so the read index in chronic bronchitis is increased it is more than 0 0.5 though this does not have any value in diagnosis in vivo it is often a autopsy finding you know you can find it, it's always help, helpful to actually tell when you are looking at you know uh, histological sections from an autopsy of a lung you can make out whether it is chronic bronchitis or something else now, the other morphological features which you find in chronic bronchitis, in more severe cases, you can even find obliteration of the lumen and that obliteration is because of fibrosis and we call it as bronchiolitis obliterans. Other features include, it could be squamous metaplasia or dysplasia of the bronchial epithelium. This is mainly because of the intent effect of the tobacco smoke. Right, so that's about the morphology of chronic bronchitis. How do you diagnose chronic bronchitis? As I said earlier, it is 
predominantly based on the clinical features and the pulmonary function testing, particularly spirometry, where the post bronchodilator FEV1 by FVC is less than 0.07 as we had uh, studied in the earlier session, right? So, chest x-ray, though it is non-specific, we often find there is increased bronchovascular markings and cardiomegaly in later stages. Now, how do you treat uh, chronic bronchitis? The main, I mean, of course, you have to stop smoking. The mainstay of uh, treatment apart from stopping smoking is medical and supportive therapy. If at all there is infection, it has to be properly treated with prompt antibiotic treatment because we know infection exacerbates the symptoms of chronic bronchitis. So, because of mucus plug, there will be there will be bronchial obstruction. So, bronchodilators might give some symptomatic relief. If there is lots and lots of mucopurulent discharge, the bronchopulmonary drainage can also help. Okay. So, this is in just about how chronic bronchitis patients are usually managed most often by the treatment of infections. So, that's about chronic bronchitis. We looked into the uh, definition of chronic bronchitis, the pathogenesis, the clinical features, morphology and a bit about diagnosis and treatment. Thank you for watching. If you have liked this video, hit the like button. Do comment if you have any queries to ask. Don't forget to subscribe if you find this video useful or if you find this channel useful and please do share if you find this video useful. Thank you. So, in the next part, that is COPD part 3, I will be discussing bronchiectasis. Right? Stay tuned. Bye-bye.